Welcome to Seattle. Welcome to my kitchen. Uh, this is my at-home kitchen. I kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of how this is to do so you can adapt it for yourself at home. I'll talk about a couple different ways to actually make what we're making in a restaurant setting uh, for a lot more people. But before we get there, I'm going to talk about Field Roast, their Celebration Roast. We'll be using this today. It's a good plant-based product. We'll be making Puerto Rican mofongo. I'm Eric. I'm a chef uh, from here in a restaurant called Otto here in Seattle. I actually started my apartment here, two seats at a time, uh, and have grown it over the past three years to have my own brick and mortar. Uh, we do 20 course tasting menus and all this crazy stuff all the way to now delivery takeout just like everybody else. Uh, but, you know, what I'm going to show you guys today, um, I'm a Puerto Rican guy. Uh, I grew up here in uh, Washington. My dad's military, so both my parents are Puerto Rican. Um, that's why, I, I, like, no accent, no nothing, it's cool. But I'm going to show you guys how to make mofongo with Celebration Field Roast. And I'll move you guys over here a little bit um, so we can start talking about this, and I'll start to demo the product. Basically what mofongo is, uh, we're going to be working with plantains. Uh, if you've never worked with plantains, um, I'm going to show you how to do one preparation. There's a thousand different ways to plantain and make them. So if you if you like potatoes, if you like you know anything starchy, this is your next best friend. Um, this is a really good adaptable uh, product that we can get it from now where it's like not ripe at all and green. You'll start to leave this out and it'll start to get like a regular banana. It'll start to look a little uh, yellow and you've got a little spots. And then we can go all the way to having it uh, be a lot darker and fully mature. What it does from that point, from now, it's really starchy, really nice fries up. You can slice this paper thin, um, but we're not, we're not going to wait for it to get mature. Or else I don't have a long live stream for like another week or two, so I need to kind of like speed this up. Uh, but we'll talk about what the plantains is and how we're going to adapt that to the Celebration Field Roast, which you've kind of seen here. Um, we have a raw version that we're going to cook up, crisp up, so that we can make it uh, work with this mofongo. And we're going to talk about a couple different staples of Puerto Rican cuisine. That way you can kind of build this up and start to kind of, if you don't know too much about Puerto Rican cuisine, um, you know, internet's fun. Uh, you can search things and we'll talk about it. Hopefully by the end of this, we can get to a point. Someone has a question about the difference between bananas and plantains. Um, you know, there's, they're really in the same family. Um, it's just, they're, they're kind of in the same family. It's just a regular banana when it's ripe, it's not going to be as starchy. The starch content's a little bit different. Um, it's a bit sweeter until you get to this being super ripe. So when this is still yellow, uh, you're not going to want to eat it uncooked. You're still going to want to cook it. Um, when it's like this green, you're still going to want to cook it. Um, unlike a banana, when it starts to turn yellow, you can still kind of eat it and it's sweet enough to be you know, ready to eat. It's just a difference of starch content and sugar development with loss of hydration over a period of time. Uh, and that'll separate your, you know, what we're going to do as a plantain today from something like a banana. Um, and, and if you've never prepped a uh, plantain before, um, I'll, I'm going to show you how, because I think a lot of people want to think of like peeling this. It's really, really hard to do that um, like this, unless you're a lot stronger than I am. And I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I've got nothing here. So <laughs> I have to use something like a knife to get that open. Um, but if you want to come a little closer, I'll show you how to kind of prep this up. Um, just go right on the edge here and just make a little slice, like a little slice, and then run your knife all the way up and down. It's nothing special. And then from here, just kind of bring your finger in underneath and just unwrap it like that. When you get this and you buy this from a store, um, they'll be cold sometimes. Uh, sometimes they'll leave them out at room temp. But if you decide to put them back in your refrigerator, just keep in mind that that's going to be harder to peel it. Um, so leave it out at room temp for you know an hour or two before you're going to go do it. And then you can unwrap it like this really nicely and easily. And we'll do these. We'll do like three of them. So you guys can see what's going on. Um, and if, you know, it's like efficiency of cutting, cut three at a time. Great. Awesome. Cut three at a time. And then we have this stuff we can get out of the way, peels. It's very appealing. <laughs> uh, and then so we can make these really quick. Kind of get this going. Really super. We do, man, probably about three to four cases of this a week. Um, and different applications at the restaurant. So it's a few hundred pounds. So I've gotten pretty good at this whole thing. Plus, you know, a whole lifetime of 38 years of play, playing with plantains, essentially. Um, so you can kind of see this, you know, it's a little bit faster. It's really nice. And these are just at room temp, so a little bit easier to work with. And then from here, um, you know, we're going to fry these up. I have um, oil that's already on the stove. 
It's around 350 degrees. Um, you can go a little bit less. Um, you can go anywhere from about 300 to 350 degrees, kind of where we want to be at. Um, I'm running just a tiny bit hotter right now because I'm going to like load it with a lot of uh, planting. But basically what that's going to do when I have a lot of stuff going into a fryer, it's going to cool it down really quickly. So I need to be able to recover that. So I'm going to start a little bit higher and then just kill it right now and bring it back. Uh, I'm going to slice these about, about a half an inch or three quarters of an inch. I want a good amount of caramelization on these. So the more surface area I have to do that, the better off I'll be to get caramelization. Um, keep in mind also, if you are cutting into these, um, this is water in here. So when you throw this into a fryer, water, oil, doesn't really mix, especially when it's really hot. So it's gonna wanna you know, kind of do that thing. If these feel kind of wet to you, um, take something like a paper towel really quick and just dab them down. Just kind of do something like this, and this will alleviate a lot of like the splashback that'll happen. Um, that's not so much an issue in like a restaurant per se, because you have a big deep fryer, but at home, splashing everywhere on the floor, on you, um, you know, if there's people, if you have kids or dogs or cats or something like that that are kind of around, it can be pretty dangerous. Um, so as much water as you can kind of get away from that, great. Um, this is going to apply the same thing that we're going to do with the Celebration Field Roast. So kind of going from this, um, and this is the retail packaging that you would find in the store, um, to something like where we've already taken it off and we have it ready to go. So you can examine this, kind of see like the filling. We have the outer edge of it. What, what we're going to do with this is I'm going to slice it up and, and dice it, and we're going to crisp it up in this other pan. Just kind of render it out, almost like if we were cooking ham. Um, so it's really flexible. It works out really well for, for me. Um, so that way I can have this be something in a mofongo. You know, typically when we're cooking something like a mofongo, uh, we'll put, you know, you know, roasted pork belly or bacon or whatever else is like pork product. Or you can have it be something like this where it's very plant-based or you can have chicken or shrimp. It's a really like awesome vehicle to add whatever you want on it. Um, so that's why like making mofongo, not a lot of people like have tried it or are used to it. So it's always something good to have like, hey, try this, something new. And, and people, you know, like it nine times out of ten. The other people that don't like it, then they don't come back and that's okay too. <laughs> Oh, so, someone had a question about the temperature of the oil again? Yep. So I have the oil right now. It's a little bit higher than 350. Again, because I'm when I start to put more stuff in here, the temperature is going to go down really quickly. So I want it to be just a little bit higher. So we're at 360, 370 right now. Uh, I just killed it, so it's going to drop down. When I go back to fry, if I'm somewhere in the neighborhood of like 325 to 350, um, that's totally fine. Because then we're going to get it just a little bit crisped up. We're going to throw it in the pilon. This is a like a mortar and pestle. We're going to mash this up with some of the other things that we'll make while we're frying this. So while we're frying this and getting this ready to go, I'm going to talk to you about some other things that we have going on that are going to go with this to kind of finish off the mofongo. Um, and so I'm going to dice this field roast up right now. This is the celebration roast again, like we were talking about. And I'm just going to dice it. It doesn't need to be anything super fancy, you know, you're not like at the line right now. And I'm not going to yell at myself, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just going to dice this up. I'm going to render this in a pot. Uh, I, have, I have an induction top, so for me, I just have like cast irons at home. I don't know if somebody's going to probably add, ask that. And then I'm just going to throw this in here. And this is going to be out of you know, temperature-wise, somewhere in the neighborhood of like 300, 325. It's not too hot. You know, I'm not looking to saute this. I'm not looking to like cook it too hard, but just enough so it starts crisping up. And we'll we'll leave this in a pan just to kind of hang out for a little bit. I have this other one with the, the plantains that are about to go in, so I'll kick this back up to being temperature-wise that I want it to be. Again, more like the three, 300, 325 um, kind of mark, but I, I have it now at like 350. So I'm going to be playing with a little bit of, uh, you know, the heat to make sure it's crisping up right. Um, and you'll see me, I can start to put it in here. One thing uh, a lot of people freak out about is deep frying things, always. Um, they want to throw it, and that's not ideal, um, because you get splashback and you'll burn yourself. So one way to do it is to understand, like, how much depth you have here. So how far is that going to fall, right? How far is this going to fall? It's going to fall, like, not too much. So if I get my hand pretty close, 
I can actually control where I'm going without having to worry about burning myself. And that's okay. This is a lot more safe than me throwing it in there, you know, kind of like, oh no. You know, it's not gonna, you can see how high it's bubbling. It kind of stayed pretty close. Also from cooking, um, for so many years, I have no feelings anyway, in my heart. Um, but, and, <laughs> and my fingers. Um, so I'm basically gonna let this go, you know, time-wise, I just kind of look at it. I'm not like li literally like, setting a timer, but I, you know, I would say if you're gonna want to be in that neighborhood, then you know, anywhere from like four to five minutes. But I'm actually gonna look at it, and once I start getting some color on this, then I'm gonna be like, oh, okay, cool. That's that's where I want to be. Um, another thing, like adjustment of things you want to look at when you're frying something. Um, if you start to see like you're getting to the top part, don't throw anything more in there. I know that sounds really silly, but a lot of times people are really beholden to recipes and they don't really think to adjust. They're like, I need to throw these two cups of plantains in here, and they do that, and then oil goes everywhere. So just kind of stay safe. I mean, this is like, you can get a second or third degree burn really quickly. Um, so we don't want that today. Someone had a question about how often do you sharpen your knives? Uh, pretty much every day sometimes. Uh, it just depends on what we're doing. Um, it, it really depends on what we're doing and what I'm breaking down or what we're fabricating, uh, whether it's butchering you know, meats or fish or, you know, even stuff like this. Um, if I had to do, you know, 500 <laughs> celebration roasts, um, that's not a lot of taxing on a knife. But if I'm actually having to do like 500 plantains, that's going to wear it down that much more. So I'm just kind of like always feeling it and seeing like where I need to be to be that sharp. Yeah. And kind of like where I need it to be rather than having some standard. I, I want it to be super sharp. So that way I don't have to work as hard and actually use the knife what it's made for. So we got both of these guys going. Again, I'm gonna leave this here just by itself, not touching it. Same thing with the, the field roast, uh, celebration roast there. And then I'll talk about a couple other things that we're gonna to add to this. Um, one is sofrito. Uh, sofrito is, you know, it's, it's a blend of different vegetables put together. There's a bunch of different sofrito. Um, and you'd see it in other cultures, too. In, in, in Italy, they call it sofrito. It's spelled a little bit differently. You know, people have, like, base ingredients. They like to add to things um, that kind of start off a cooking process. Um, for, you know, for us in, in, in Puerto Rico and other uh, cultures, like Dominican and Cuban, we have our own different methods of this. I'm all the way in Seattle, so my sofrito is going to be very different than even being in Puerto Rico. Uh, in Puerto Rico, a lot of times you'll see them using, um, you know, little sweet peppers that are found there. Um, they'll use racao, which is another form of cilantro, like culantro. Um, but for here, I can't get a lot of those things, so I've had to kind of like adjust uh, that process. So what I use is, uh, when we're making um, this sofrito here, um, we're using cilantro, white onion, bell peppers, and, and that's about it. Um, sometimes there's people, you can add tomatoes, that's totally fine. Um, you can add a, a bunch of different ingredients in there, you can add garlic, you can whatever. Uh, we have compartmentalized it in different ways, uh, so that way it's very much like a base because we produce a lot of different Puerto Rican dishes um, in the restaurant. So we keep this kind of like very, very, very neutral. Um, so that way if we're adding something else on the back end, like we'll talk about mojo here. Um, so this is vinegar, a ton of garlic, uh, and then oregano, you can kind of see that on the side. Um, we'll add this to this, we'll kind of add it all together, and then our last component here is going to be sazon. Um, these are all ingredients that are kind of like the base of, you know, cuisine for me. Um, every time somebody asks me, like, what I should put in <laughs> any dish that's coming out that's Puerto Rican, I'm like, just, you know, sazon, sofrito, mojo, um, and then just, you know, different levels of that, different ratios. Taste it, let's see where it's at. Okay, it's cool, it's good, uh, and then we're done. Um, that's pretty much like a lot of, you know, Puerto Rican cuisine is a lot of tasting, a lot of tasting, a lot of tasting. And you kind of get to the moment where you're like, okay, that's cool, that's good, I like it, and then we taste it and eat more and everybody's happy. Um, we're getting to a point where I'm starting to get some color, so you can kind of zoom in there. So you can kind of see this, I'll pull this out. And I can actually feel this, it's actually starting to get kind of hard a little bit, um, which is fine. I just want it to go a little bit more. You can actually see I'm starting to float too. That's a good indicator of where I want it to be. Um, I have the, Celebration roast over here. It's starting to like crackle a little bit. I'm gonna keep it going a little bit longer. Um, 
So I, I want that little crispiness to it. I want it to kind of show up. Um, there's, you know, butternut squash in there. There's a little bit of mushroom. So, you know, knowing that that's the case, I, I can actually, like, render, you know, get that a little bit crispy, and I know it's going to taste that much better. Can you let us know a little bit more about the field roast donation? Yeah, so if you go to um, Chef's Feed, uh, they've been working with IRC, Independent Restaurant Commission, or uh, Coalition, I think it is. Um, and they've been working together to help out independent restaurants. I'm an independent small restaurant. I have less than like 10 employees. Uh, we're super tiny, so they've been working together, you know, the three of them, Field Roast, um, also with uh, the IRC and Chef Speed. They've all been working on it together to kind of help small businesses like myself, you know, kind of getting me in here to do recipes and helping us basically give us another gig to do, essentially, uh, which is really cool. Um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do for the staff was actually give them a paid day off. We've actually been open this entire time. Uh, we haven't been open to dine-in service, but we've been doing a lot of delivery takeouts. It's been super, 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 super busy. Um, and I just want to, I wanted to have a moment that, like, we could actually have a day off to, like, go hang responsibly. <laughs> um, but, you know, have it to be something where they're actually sponsoring that, which is super cool. Um, and that gives us an opportunity to just kind of chill for a day, but... Also, not have to worry about the restaurant, even though that's always my concern. Um, but for a little bit, just a little pause. Um, so that's cool. If you go to uh, Chef's Feed, then you'll see a link on their site that kind of loops this all together. And you can make donations there to the IRC. Um, and, and, you know, again, if you guys are out looking at things, if you want to support kind of everybody here, Next time you go to the store, check out uh, Field Roast, see what else they have available. You know, if you're online after this thing, go check out their product line. I think you'll find that they have a lot of good products at play, you know, whether it's restaurant or whether it's, you know, at home. And it's, you know, I think a lot of people are looking for something different to cook right now, too, because they've been cooking their own food for a little bit. Um, it's a good curveball. You know, it's a good curveball. Give, give something else a little try and kind of go from there. Someone asked about maybe a supplement for cilantro. Yep. Uh, so, so no cilantro. Um, you know, if you don't want to use cilantro, I know there's people out there that kind of like think it's soapy and it's gross or whatever. Um, I mean, that's that's fine, I guess. It's a main part of the 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 sofrito. Um, but if you want to substitute it. Um, I would say just leave it out completely. Don't try to give it a sub. And then just go with the regular vegetables of the sofrito. And I think at, at that time, you'll be fine. Um, if you don't like that, that flavor of uh, cilantro too much, then, you know, just omit that and kind of work around it. Uh, it's not an end-all, says-all, but, you know, that's kind of a thing that I've grown up around, so it's kind of hard to say, like, what's a good supplement. So I'm getting kind of, you know, crispy over here. Getting some color on that, which is great. Again, I'm just looking for texture on this. Um, it smells so good. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, all, all I'm trying to do with this is develop a little flavor. Um, so I'm at a point now where I want to do that even more. Uh, I have the sofrito. Um, this, this is vegetables on, you know, plant-based uh, product here. I'm going to add that in. Just kind of get this working a little bit. Not too much. I don't want it to overhydrate, but I want a little bit of this base. Um, to kind of like cook a little bit more. So when I go put this in the mortar and pestle, I'm gonna have raw plus cooked sofrito plus the field roast on here too. Um, so we're adding a bunch of like different layers. Um, we're adding a bunch of different kind of like flavor profiles, which is really nice. Um, I've got the plantain here. Um, again, I don't have really feeling in my fingers, so this is really hot. <laughs> I just, I can't feel them anymore. Um, so I, I, this is really crispy. You know, I can kind of, I'll show you, I'll give you an idea of how this looks like before. Um, if I'll smash it with my knife so you can actually see what I'm going to do. Um, otherwise, when I get it into the pilon, I can do like this, and that's kind of what, it hap what happens here. So in Puerto Rican cuisine, uh, we have something, and there's other cuisines that do it too, but they call tostonas, and it's basically frying them twice. Um, so at this moment, I've fried it once, and you can do one of two things at this point. Go right back in and fry it, or you know, a lot of times what we can do is, another good tip, is take them and freeze them. Because uh, what ends up happening is when you freeze it, the ice crystals kind of break it down, tenderize it, and then from there you fry it, uh, and it yields a, a better tostones, um, which is really cool. These are on the smaller side. Uh, if you actually want to do tostones, you basically double that size. You can get somewhere from around like, you know, two to three inches, ideal. 
uh, to make really nice dust known as something around like, you know, uh, the diameter of like a baseball. Um, but these are good too. It, there's not a bad way to plantain, so we're good. Um, I'm going to go back in here, kind of check this out, stir it up just a little bit. And then one thing I'm going to also add in here to get this going a little bit more is sassone. And the sassone, I mean, you can find a bunch of different versions. I have my own that we make. Um, and this is a recipe that I've developed myself to kind of have my own touch to it. Um, it uses a lot of uh, native ingredients from Puerto Rico, so Taino, Taino Indians use a lot of annatto in their cooking. Um, it's got a lot of influences um, from all the way through the history of Puerto Rico. You've got things like cumin in here, you know, oregano, um, uh, there's a little bit of paprika. Uh, and, and then from there, it's a good base. Uh, there's salt, obviously. Um, but from there, it's a good base. We have three different kinds. We have one that has like saffron in it, we have another one that's like kind of spicy, but not too spicy. I think a lot of people think that Puerto Rican cuisine is very spicy, but it's not. Um, there's things that you can add to it. We make like pique, which is like um, essentially like pickled like peppers that we ferment, and then it gets super hot over a period of time. Um, but for now, this is our this is our mix. So I'll give you that. That looks good. Sassone, sofrito, celebration roast, all ready to go. I've got plantains here. Couple things to help me move this into um, production land and finishing land. So I've got a pilon. Uh, if you don't know what that is, I'm a, that's okay. Basically, think mortar and pestle, right? Mortar and pestle. A lot of people will tell you like a bunch of different things you should do or can do or whatever else. Just think, you know, mortar and pestle. That's fine. We're just gonna mash it a little bit. Um, so what I'm here. I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to put my plantains in, okay? And I'm basically going to do this. I'm going to mash this up. And I've got on the side here, I've got this mojo that I've already made. Magic TV. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit in here already. And this is raw all the way. It's just raw garlic. Uh, distilled white vinegar, and then a little bit of oregano. Um, and again, there's different versions of it. You know, there's ones that you can buy at the store that have like xanthan gum in it or whatever else. This is without any stabilizers. What I'm putting in here right now uh, is extra virgin olive oil to finish it. Uh, the oil that I cooked in and fried these in uh, was grapeseed oil, so good neutral oil. Smokes kind of high. It's not going to be something like olive oil. Don't don't uh, cook with extra virgin olive oil. Don't fry things. Uh, smoke point's really low. It's around 225 degrees. So if you go to do something like this, it's just going to smoke your house out. Um, it's not, a, not okay. Not ideal. Um, so I've got this. I've got my roast here. I'm ready to go. I'm going to start to put this in now. And then, you know, back to this. And I'm just doing this in stages, you know, a little bit of plantain, a little bit of the celebration roast. Um, and it's going to start to be like really good. Um, and then I'm just adding more seasoning, I'm adding more stuff. You can never go wrong with that much more seasoning. You can never go wrong with like adding a little bit more of this. It's okay. Um, whatever's left over, guess what? Add that in there too, you know, or eat it off to the side. It doesn't have to necessarily be in here. Um, so again, back to mashing. One thing I want it to be like is not too dry, uh, and so I can kind of change that and manipulate that by adding something like the sofrito. I can add some of the olive oil in here, and just kind of like, at this point, this is like build your own, uh, build your own mofongo. And everybody has, you know, once you start to do it a few more times, everybody has their own kind of vibe to it. It's, it's like waking up in the morning and everybody has like a yogurt bowl or something that they do for themselves. Um, this is the same kind of thing, you can like pick your own path. You can add different things in here. Um, even like if you want to look at other products that Field Roast makes, this can be entirely plant-based. Doesn't have to be anything where you start to introduce any sort of meat, you know, and then when people eat it, they're going to like it. And if they don't, kick them out of your house. <laughs> <laughs> I just cooked for you. Leave. Um, which that's okay too. You know, if they yelp your, your house, then they have problems. <laughs> um, and again, I'm just kind of mashing here. Monster mash. 
So, cool. Let me add some more. Drop it over here. <laughs> Awesome. So this is good. Someone asked if we have mofongo on the menu um, frequently. Frequently. From time to time, yes. Um, Seattle's a very small market for Puerto Rican food. I'm the only person in the city that does it. <laughs> so it's kind of hard for me to always have something on the menu like that because there aren't enough people that really want it. Um, if I was in a different market, mofongo would be on the menu every day. I might even have like a... a, a Thing where it's like mofongo only <laughs> but we do pop-ups within the restaurant where we just feature mofongo from time to time um then we do like dungeons crab chicken you know beef whatever else with it um and it's it's really cool people get a kick out of it um uh, but we kind of have to reserve that for every once in a while here um can you over mash the plant yeah you can um you kind of want it to be a little bit crunchy still from when we fried it that's why i kind of went to that point of saying like I want to be caramelized a little bit. I still want it to have a little bit of like the, the you know the celebration roast to be a little bit uh, crunchy because as I'm eating it, I don't want it to just be like it's a mashed potato. You know, I don't want to overwork this. I kind of want to have it just nice and light. Um, let me see if I'm gonna. This is gonna help me out today. <laughs> I don't think it is, but <laughs> I don't think it is. It's fine. At this moment, uh, I can kind of eat it. And I just put a little bit of more sasone on there. Um, that's like the mark of me doing it for real. It's like these like little orange fingers. It's, it's really, it's adorable. Uh, and then from here, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's pretty much it. You know, I'd probably hit this with a little bit of olive oil. If you want to be fancy, you can garnish it. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> you can kind of do one of these and take some pictures and Instagram it or whatever else. Nothing fancy, you know, because it's, it's just good. You know, it doesn't need to be that fancy, but you can eat it, kind of go for it, give it a try. But essentially, that's, that's, the, that's it. That's the dish. Questions? <laughs> so if you guys have questions, I mean, go ahead and follow up with us. Uh, we would be more than happy to take them. Uh, and then go ahead and check out, you know, kind of the sites we were talking about. Again, thanks to Field Roast for kind of putting us on and sponsoring this and it's really cool to actually be out of the kitchen for a little bit <laughs> and be at home to cook. I haven't cooked in a while, so it's, it's pretty fun. Um, so thanks to, to them. Uh, check out Chef's Feed for the, all the IRC information. So if you want to make a donation to IRC, go through Chef's Feed to do that. Um, and then also check out the rest of the product line from Field Roast, from their you know, celebration roast from this to all the other things they offer. Um, cook Puerto Rican food. It's good for you. And, and, and if you don't know how to, reach out. More than happy to you know, give you tips and tricks and fun times to do it too, so. All right, so someone wants you to definitely take a bite. I will, here. It's terrible, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try not to get like one of those gigantic TV bites. Oh, good. Nice. Awesome. Ah, good, solid. I'm Ingrid, sorry. I'm the director of operations and Eric's girlfriend. We kind of do this together. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate the day off, Field Roast. <laughs> it's super, super cool. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.